Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today's video, unfortunately, again, is a pretty grim one, I'll be honest with you. I hadn't really planned to do another Shark Attack video on the channel for a little while, and I guess if you look back at the last three videos now, they all seem to be about Shark Attacks. For me, Shark Bites isn't a gory animal attack channel, but I wouldn't be truly representing the world of sharks to you if I didn't cover this type of content. Because shark attacks do happen, I'm not gonna gloss over it or sugarcoat it for you. For some of you that are undoubtedly gonna get a little bit angsty that I've made this video, we've got another video coming out on Sunday all about shark rewilding. So I'll remind you, if this isn't the type of content that you don't wanna see, we will always have non-shark attack related content here on the channel, so you can watch that instead. You don't have to watch this. Generally, I only tend to make these videos when I feel like I have something interesting to say about it, and today there's a bunch of interesting discussion points. So very recently, i.e. in the last 48 hours, a Russian man has been killed by a shark in Haggadah in Egypt. I know, again. And once again, the incident has been caught on film. Anyway, today we're gonna to be discussing the event as well as the shark species that was responsible and also Haggadah and its recent spate of incidents like this. I'm gonna be honest guys, the footage that I've seen of this is probably the worst in terms of gruesomeness that I have ever seen. I personally think it's worse than the Simon Nellist attack that happened a few years ago. Firstly, I can't sit here and knowingly show you this footage of a man who's recently lost his life in such a horrendous way, so I'm gonna be showing you stills. Also, YouTube would 100% take this video down if I showed you. I will, however, at some point in this video, point you in the direction where you can see the footage if for whatever reason you wanted to watch it. I have to warn you all, it's really grim. And like I said before, it's probably one of the worst videos like this that I've ever seen. So when I do tell you where you can watch the video, please, please do keep that in mind. The reason that I watch it but don't show you is so that I can gain an insight into what's happened and then pass that information on to you. But what we have here are some interesting discussion points about the species responsible and also the Red Sea and Haggadah as a location for events like this. Right, let's dive in. So the images you're seeing here are of a Russian man who at the time of making this video hasn't been named, although he was reported to be 24 years old. The man in question isn't a tourist, but has been living and working in Egypt for some time. So you'd like to think that he knows the area quite well. He was swimming pretty close to the shore. We're probably talking about 40 or 50 meters from the shoreline, although it doesn't look like he's swimming off a beach here. In these stills and the video footage of the incident, he can initially be seen being thrashed around in the water as the shark bites him from below. So based on the fin morphology here, where we can clearly see the dorsal and then the tip of the caudal as well, I am almost 100% sure that this is a tiger shark. I'd say based on some size comparisons here, we're likely looking at a large female tiger shark, probably around 12 to 13 feet in length. Like I said, guys, the footage here is absolutely horrendous. At points, we can see this man's legs pointed directly upwards and out of the water as he's being bitten. Having watched it, it's not too dissimilar to the portrayal of a shark attack when Chrissy is attacked in the opening scene of Jaws. After about a minute, a nearby boat comes to the scene, but by this time, the man in question had already been taken underneath the water. I've read about and seen some pictures circulating online of a large tiger shark that was caught by fishermen in the area and also very quickly after the incident took place. I'm not usually a fan of this, to be honest, but I imagine they'll be looking for and will probably find the remains of this man within that tiger shark's stomach. So. Tiger sharks. We know that tiger sharks are probably one of the most generalist and opportunistic feeders that are out there in the shark world. They will literally eat anything. And they're right up there as a species in terms of unprovoked attacks on humans. So this incident here is without a doubt a predation event. I've said it before on the channel and I'll say it again. Some shark species, which are opportunistic feeders, will eat whatever they can to survive, including a human. Tiger sharks are well and truly one of these opportunistic species and based on some of the eyewitness accounts that I've read, this man was bitten and then consumed by that shark. This incident also follows the two attacks that happened in the same location, Haggadah, less than a year ago. I did do a video on that at the time, which you can watch here by the way, but at that time we didn't have that much information. There were loads of reports flying around that it was a mako shark that was responsible, so I did discuss that and whether that might be the case. But in the weeks after that incident, the coroner's report came back and and it was concluded that the two women were likely bitten and killed by the same shark, again, a tiger shark. And of course, it also follows the attacks that occurred in 2020, 2018, and 2010 in the Sharm El Sheikh region, which is about 80 kilometers away. So the Red Sea, and specifically these two locations, Haggadah and Sharm El Sheikh, seem to be cropping up quite a lot in regards to shark attacks. But the question is, why? In reality, it comes down to a bunch of different things, but I'm gonna talk you through all of them. The first one is the behavior 
behavior and the life histories of the sharks. I know some of the attacks in the past have been attributed to oceanic white tips, but for the purpose of today's video and this incident, we're gonna be looking at tiger sharks. Tiger sharks in the Red Sea reportedly begin to move into shallower waters because of their mating season, which supposedly runs between the months of April and July. And I have to say that I haven't read any research papers or seen any data that shows the tiger shark mating season runs between those months. But what's also happening during those months, i.e. late April to July, is turtle nesting season. And I have seen studies and data supporting that. In Egypt, hawksbill and green turtles start to head onto beaches around late April with a peak in June, and then it starts to peter out towards July. Turtles do form up a decent part of the diet for tiger sharks. So the movement of turtles will also influence the movement of tiger sharks. It's a pretty complex predator prey relationship, but there's no question about it the sharks will be following the turtles. And as those turtles move towards the beaches to lay their eggs, the tiger sharks will follow them in from the deeper water into the shallow waters. The second thing that we need to point out here, which is a really interesting one, is the ocean topography of the area. The beaches and shallow reefs of Egypt are super interesting. Generally, just a few meters off the shore, you can have these amazing tropical reefs that stay in the shallower waters, but then very quickly, they steeply drop off into deeper water. So in these locations, you can find yourself swimming in shallow waters or snorkeling on the reef, and then really quickly, it's gonna drop off significantly to deep water. And sometimes these drop-offs occur maybe only 20 or 30 meters off the shore. And it's this topography that means that shark species that might normally be patrolling the deeper waters find themselves in shallower waters relatively easily. And this is the case for all of the species of shark that have been reported to have bitten people within that area, mainly tiger sharks and oceanic white tips. For the oceanic white tips, it's super apparent because they are most definitely an offshore pelagic species. But the way the ocean topography is designed in these areas, they can find themselves on those really shallow reefs very, very quickly. The third thing that I'm gonna throw in now is water temperature. Right now in Hagada, you're getting an average sea surface temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius. Based on scientific studies, ambient water temperature can directly have an impact on shark metabolism, i.e. water temperature goes up, shark metabolism goes up. And this factor then increases the need for a shark to consume more food. If your metabolic rate is higher, then you're burning through energy a lot quicker, and you're gonna need to eat more food to replenish that energy that you've lost. And this need to feed per se likely contributes to sharks venturing into areas where maybe they normally wouldn't go to, to find food. And finally, the last thing here, and probably the most obvious one, is people. Millions and millions of people visit Egypt's beaches every single summer, and you can likely bet they're gonna go in the sea. The beauty of Egypt's reefs and the really warm water temperatures means you're gonna get a lot of people entering the water who are swimming and snorkeling. It's a pretty obvious statement here, but the more people you have in the water, the more likely it's going to be that someone has a negative interaction with a shark. Alongside this, there's multiple reports of tourists feeding fishes on these reefs or from the docks that run out to the sea. With bait in the water, you're gonna stir up animal activity and that includes stirring up sharks. I've seen a bunch of anecdotal reports of people chucking chicken and lamb into the water to try and feed fish. And the way that these inshore reefs are designed is that they have these small canyons that run along the reef, eventually go Going out to deeper water. The scent trails from bait that's thrown into the water ends up running down these little canyons and then out to the deeper water where it's picked up by sharks. And over time, this provisioning can end up altering the behavior of the sharks making them venture into these shallower areas in the hope that they're gonna get food. Alongside the whole people factor here, you could probably also throw in the element of overfishing. Fishing has been pretty rampant in the Red Sea for a while now, and it's reported their fish stocks are massively depleted. And again, the problem here is when you start to overfish an area, there's then not enough food to go around for predators in that area like sharks. And that can also, of course, contribute to forcing sharks to venture into areas where they normally wouldn't go to try and get food. So you've got a whole bunch of factors there that are all combining together to create conditions that can lead to a shark attack. Turtle nesting season, deep to shallow ocean topography, water temperatures increasing metabolic rates, and then you've got the people and overfishing. Clearly something needs to change here, and I imagine the Egyptian authorities are now really, really gonna have to start 
looking into this carefully. It kind of baffles me as to how little has been done as of yet. The biggest and easiest ones here are putting bands in that stop tourists chucking food into the water, and then also putting in a temporary fishing ban within those months that these shark attacks are taking place. Because you obviously can't change the ocean topography of the area, nor can you change the behaviors of the sharks and the turtles. Bringing it back around though, the sad thing here is a young man has unfortunately lost his life. And again, my thoughts really do go out to his family. I have to remind you all though, that these events are still pretty rare. I know I sound like a broken record with this, but just think about how many millions and millions of people are visiting Egypt's beaches every summer and how many millions of people have done so in the last 10 months or so. It's a crazy number of people that are entering the water. So yes, the chances of this happening are still pretty slim when you think about those millions of people. If there's anyone out there that's watching this video who's about to travel to Haggadah for a holiday, please do be careful. Once they reopen the beaches, if you do choose to go swimming, and to be fair, I still would go swimming, there are a few things that you can do to try and keep safe. And one of the really, really big ones, and I've said this so many times here on the channel, please swim in a big group of people. The three people who have lost their lives as a result of tiger shark attacks in Haggadah from the last year or so, were all swimming on their own. Please, please, in an area where there are known to be sharks, swim in a group. You're way safer in a group situation than you ever would be on your own. Opportunistic species like tiger sharks, when they need to feed, will tend to go for the lone individual as opposed to the one that's in a group. Safety in numbers is one of your biggest allies in a situation like this. Now, if for whatever reason you still wanna find the video footage of this incident, then all you gotta do is Google it. If you type in shark attack Haggadah Reddit, it is one of the first ones that comes up and you can watch it there. I have to warn you again though, guys, it's really not a nice thing to watch. I know there's gonna be some people out there that are gonna give me a bit of grief for making this video because there always is, but hopefully you've learned a little bit about why these attacks might be taking place in this area and also learned something that you can do to try and keep safe if you do choose to enter the water. I mean, the simplest one is to just not go in the water, but I'm not going to be able to stop people from going in the sea. I'd be the same. I'd also want to go in the sea, but there are things that you can do to keep safe, especially in areas where there are sharks. If you're after some more shark related content like this, make sure you stick around to the end screen where you're going to be able to hear my thoughts on the disappearance of Cameron Robin. So that's going to crop up somewhere around here in the next 10 seconds. Or alternatively, please do feel free to browse the Shark Bites channel. We've got a bunch of cool content all about sharks right here on Shark Bites. So go and have a look. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. It really does help out the channel every time you click that like button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below. And that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.